Welcome to the new fly fisher. I'm Colin McEwen, your host. I think everybody enjoys reading their good fly fishing magazines. I know I've got two or three subscriptions myself. There's a new fly fishing magazine called The Canadian Fly Fisher, which I really enjoy, and I think a lot of people in Canada and the United States uh, would enjoy having a subscription to this magazine because it details information about destinations, techniques, etc., throughout Canada. I'm here in Belleville, Ontario. And I'm joining Chris Marshall, the publisher and editor of the Canadian Fly Fisher magazine. And we're going to go out and do some largemouth bass fishing on the Bay of Quinte. Come along with us for the day. I think you'll enjoy it. The new Fly Fisher is sponsored by Bank of Montreal Atlantic Salmon Federation MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products. Today we're joining Chris Marshall and his good friend Dan Leader fly fishing on the Bay of Quinte. The Bay of Quinte is located on Lake Ontario near the small town of Belleville. This region is renowned for its walleye fishery, but in recent years it has evolved into a noted bass fishing destination. It is late afternoon on a mid-July day. The fishing conditions are far from ideal as we are coping with the post-cold front situation. Clear and bright skies combined with varying air temperatures to result in very passive fish. We're going to have to vary our retrieves and search methods in order to locate some active fish. Chris has been an avid fly fisher for most of his life. A few years ago, he retired from being an English teacher and reverted to writing for fly fishing magazines throughout North America and the UK. He began the Canadian Fly Fisher magazine just over two years ago. Dan and Chris have been good friends for years. Though Dan has tried fly fishing, he prefers generally to use spin casting gear to pursue bass. An ardent bass tournament in Angler, he's collected many awards over the past few years. Dan has generously offered to take both Chris and I out today and show us a little bit about where largemouth bass locate. The first location Dan takes us to is a nice weedy bay that features submerged islands or humps covered with lily pads and rice weed. Also in this area is a unique tall grassy mat that is literally floating on the surface of the bay. The thick mat of weeds and roots provides excellent cover for bass and other fish. Dan recommends we try fishing a submerged hump first, casting to all edges. Then we'll move to the grassy shoreline and cast to the undercut areas and points. The last spot we will check combines the grassy shoreline with some fallen trees and thick lily pad cover. Got him. Little guy or a big one? 
podcast, so Sam, do you have any thoughts or just leave us? The retrieve we use today is principally a strip and pause method. The key is to vary the retrieve rate in order to ascertain the aggressiveness of the bass. Often you need to really slow down your retrieve in order to trigger strikes. Well, we've flogged the water for the last few hours, and uh, unfortunately, despite our best efforts, only came up with a few fish. And one pike that uh, bit off Chris's fly but mercifully uh, copped it up a few minutes later. We're gonna give it again, uh, give it another try uh, tomorrow morning. Hopefully conditions will be a little bit better and the uh, fish will be a little more uh, aggressive because right now they're quite passive. Uh, might be something to do with the fact that uh, cold front moved through a few days ago. The next morning, after enjoying a hearty breakfast, we set out to try some new locations. Dan thought that the cold front may have pushed the largemouth into deeper spots, so we started casting the structure near deep water and right away, our luck began to change. In Canada, largemouth bass do not obtain substantial sizes like they do in the southern United States. This is a consequence of the short growing season they have available. Another one just swirled out here. The average largemouth is usually in the one and a half to three pound size, with the true trophy being any fish caught over six pounds. The current Ontario record is a specimen that weighed just over 10 pounds. Quite a few fish here this morning, Dan. It's, um, you, you've got lots of experience about from, from fishing tournaments about where to find fish at this time of the year, particularly the middle of July. Uh, why do you think we've done so well here? Why have we found so many fish around? The shoreline is a spawning area, so bass spawn here in the late May and early June. After they spawn, and the male has looked after the fry they move out to the nearest weed line. Mm -hmm. And we've got a shallow weed line here, about, well, not shallow, but about five feet deep, good weed cover, lots of minnows, lots of feed. And in the outer edge, we've got access to deep water because we've got the best of all conditions here. Food, weed cover for ambush, close to a spawning area, and deeper water when they're in a lethargic mood and they don't want to eat anything. So we've got all conditions here right here. Yeah, we seem to have caught most of our fish uh, somewhat closer in, in the, in the space between the inside edge of the weed line and the shoreline, or just off the ends of the docks. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now that was on a path to retrieve. It's not a big one, it's about the same size as yours. I'm still worried about my tobacco. Well, that was 
in very lightly. There you go, mate. This is a place you fish quite often, Dan, so you know it really well. Uh, what would you do if you were fishing in a place which you'd never been to before? Uh, any special techniques you'd use? What I would do is I would pick a bay with, with, with points on it, and I would go in towards shore and I'd look for spawning areas. And then from the spawning areas, I would move outwards till I came to the first weed line. And that's where I would start fishing. Because what the bass will do, they'll leave the spawning area and they'll spend most of the summer on weed lines that are just out from the spawning areas. Mm -hmm. And it's particularly good if there's access to deep water. Like here, we're fishing in about five or six feet of water, but just out from that, there's about, it's about 10 to 15 feet deep. So they have the best of both worlds. They can migrate in here to feed on shallow on minnows which hang around the weeds. And for stormy conditions and when they're not too active, they can move out to the deep water and congregate. Mm -hmm. The bass are not a roaming fish. They're stationary. They'll stay at home. If you catch a bass one day and you release the bass in the same spot, chances are you come back in a few days and you'll be able to catch the same fish. Mm -hmm. The Bay of Quinte has undergone a kaleidoscope of transformations during the past 20 years or so. The abundant and famous walleye fishery of the 1980s has been dramatically affected by the introduction of zebra mussels into Lake Ontario. Walleye, which are very photophobic, could not cope with the clearing water conditions and have been driven to deeper water. During the 1990s, aquatic vegetation growth really took off and resulted in new and unique ecosystems which has provided perfect cover and habitat for predatory species such as largemouth bass and northern pike. Chris Marshall has really helped fly fishers throughout Canada and the United States by creating the Canadian Fly Fisher magazine. Quality national fly fishing magazine was truly needed to detail the great opportunities that exist throughout Canada. Let's join Chris as he discusses what the catalyst was for developing the Canadian uh, fly fishing. Luckily, I had friends and acquaintances in, in fly fishing all across the country uh, who liked the idea and were willing to let somebody do, put all the hassle into it. <laughs> I guess the main reason behind it was the was that I had been freelancing as a fly fishing writer oh, for a good, well, since 1980. And it was really, really difficult to find publications in, in Canada to publish fly fishing about Canada. There was no national fly fishing magazine. There were limited opportunities in regional uh, general outdoors magazines. Of, and that was uh, pretty much it. So uh, most of what I sold, I sold in the US, uh, UK, Australia, some in Canada. But there were few opportunities for Canadian fly fishing writers to get published in their own country. So we made that one of our main mandates. And we are now doing that. All our, our, all our writers are Canadian. Uh, not that we turned down an American or a Brit or an Australian or whatever for the occasional piece, but what we are doing is giving a place for Canadian fly fishing writers to get published. Well, Chris, uh, there was certainly a need in this country to have a national fly fishing magazine. Um, I guess one of the biggest things is that people want to know about destinations. They want to know about different species in different areas and where they can go, uh, fly patterns, etc. that are very specific to regions. And yeah. uh, your magazine has uh, collated them all very nicely together. Uh, and uh, the writers are excellent. Well, we've, we've made a point of, uh, obviously, of highlighting Canadian destinations. We've, and we make it uh, deliberately sort of, uh, to cover the whole country. We always have uh, at least one feature from BC, from Alberta, from either Saskatchewan or Manitoba. Of from Ontario, from Quebec, the Maritimes. Uh, in, in every issue, we also have a, a special feature in every issue called the Downtown Fly Fisher, which highlights a particular Canadian city. Interesting, just about every major city in Canada has fly, some sort of fly fishing 
within city limits and in just about every case some excellent fly fishing within a very easy drive uh, just beyond the city limits. Some have got some superb fly fishing right within the city themselves such as Montreal for instance. Mm. Unique to the Bay of Quinte is a large area of floating grassy mats. These provide ideal shelter and ambush points for largemouth. Today we're using large poppers to try and coax them into a surface take. Visually this is exciting fishing, especially when the fish are in an aggressive mood. Today we use a number of great surface flies to bring the largemouth to the top. Patterns such as the Sneaky Pete, Mouse, Dalbert Diver and Taps Bug are all perfect for inciting violent surface takes. For the tie and recipes for these and other patterns seen on our series, please visit our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Right, we've got a double header. <laughs> You've got the dot fish too. <laughs> you There are a number of good leaders that can be used for largemouth bass fishing on the surface. Two key points to keep in mind are first, use stiff materials in the construction of your leaders. This will greatly aid in turning over large and bulky flies. The second point is, treat your knots with a product such as Loon UV Knot in order to both strengthen and smoothen the surface of the knots. This will greatly reduce the number of weeds you get snagged on your leader. A fast action rod such as this FlyLogic Optimum Plus are ideal for casting large flies and hauling bass out of thick weedy cover. This rod was matched to a Teton Large Arbor 810 reel loaded with Airflow 7000 TS Wait For It 8 floating line. Why they call large mouths. Not a big fish, but there we go. It's got about five pounds of weed hanging off it today. Most of the large ones we caught were comparatively small. However, their size is made up by the sheer numbers available in this region. In just a few years, this area will probably be a phenomenal place to fly fish for trophy sized large ones. I'm certain we'll return again, and the next time, we'll try it with float tubes. Thank you, Chris. I really enjoyed it. We're right now in the uh, 
basically in the midday sun and the bites really uh, come off. We haven't caught any fish for a while now. Um, I appreciate you taking me out, teaching me a little bit about largemouth bass fishing on a popper and a fly rod. Um, very much appreciate your expertise, Dan, in uh, telling us about uh, your experiences with bass tournaments and where bass uh, relate to structure. And uh, Chris, I think a lot of viewers are probably going to be very interested in your Canadian Fly Fisher magazine because of the fact it covers the whole spectrum of fly fishing opportunities in Canada. Thank you again. It's a pleasure. Even though you did catch more fish than I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next week on the new Fly Fisher. If you want to subscribe to the Canadian Fly Fisher or wish more information, then either call their toll-free number or visit their website at www.canflyfish.com. The new Fly Fisher is sponsored by Bank of Montreal Atlantic Salmon Federation MasterCard, Ducks Unlimited, Canada's conservation company, Teton Fly Reels, Hodgman Outdoor Products,